Alley with Potomac Beads. Join me in this video and learn how to change your direction of your right angle weave. If you've got the best bead box, this project's in there for you. If you want to check out the best bead box or any of the materials, click on the link below the video in the description to shop with us online and to get more details. So as promised, we are gonna teach you in this subscription box how to do right angle weave. And we're gonna embellish that right angle weave and learn from the previous months how to do a simple design with the right angle weave, using some beads in varying sizes to create a nice V shape for our necklace. We're gonna be using our four millimeter bicones to begin. I have five feet of .006 wildfire beading thread and a size 10 beading needle. I'm going to add onto my thread and needle, and there's a stop bead on the end there with about three feet or three inches after it, four beads. Those four beads are gonna drop down next to our starter bead. We're then gonna take our thread and needle and we're gonna sew through the next three beads. So beads one, two, and three. I want your needle to exit before bead number four. That is gonna create our first little right angle weave box. When we're exiting through bead number three here, I move my stop bead off the way, you're gonna notice that when we're looking at it, here's bead number one that we sewed through, bead number two, and we're exiting bead number three, which is the bead that is on the right hand side of our box that we've created. That bead that's on the right hand side is where we're always gonna want our needle to end up and exit always on the right side of the box we're working on. To create the next right angle weave box, we are going to, yet again, put on more beads, this time just three. The reason we're putting on three beads rather than four is because we're gonna use that right side of the last box to help us create the next box. Our thread's coming out the right side of that box at the bottom. I added the three beads and I'm gonna sew into that same bead that my thread is coming out of from the top. That rounds out that right angle weave box and creates my second box. Now to make a third box, I have to get over to the right side. So I'm gonna go through the bottom and then up through the right side. So once again, I'm coming out of the right hand side of the box that I just created. So that's box number two. I'm going to create a total of seven boxes, and then I'm gonna come back and start to add in my six millimeter gold stone to the design. So right now my thread's coming out of the top, always the right-hand side. It'll alternate the top and the bottom. Coming out the right-hand side of that right angle unit, I add three beads, and I sew into the bottom of that one. This is gonna be my third box. To finish the third box, I need to get to the right-hand side. So I'm gonna sew through the bead that's at the top, and I'm gonna sew through the bead that's on the right-hand side, because I'm always coming out of that right-hand side bead. That's my third box. Fourth box, three more beads on, coming out the bottom, so I sew into the top to make my box and my circle. Those beads go on, and again, I need to get over to that right side so I can add more, so I'm gonna sew down through the bottom bead because that's the thread direction's already going. It's a series of figure eights as right angle weave. And then we're sewing up through the right side because we're always exiting the right side. I have now one, two, three, four boxes. I'm going to continue getting on fifth, sixth, seventh, and then we'll catch up and we're going to add another bead into our rotation. So we're gonna switch from just the bicone beads to adding one six O bead as we progress into our larger shape. Once you have the seven units on, we're gonna continue and we're gonna add a gold stone in the middle. So for our eighth right angle weave unit, we are going to add three beads as well, but the center one is gonna change from one of my four millimeter bicones to one of my six millimeter goldstone gemstone beads. My thread's coming out the bottom, I go into the top, and that completes my eighth right angle weave box. Now, I still need to get over to the right side of that box, which is now my gemstone bead. So I'm going over through the bottom, and when you're using different sizes, get a nice little pool, so you try to get rid of as much thread as possible. 
So there I have my eight units. So you're gonna see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then my eighth one, which starts with my gold stone. As I begin then, I'm going to continue with a total of uh, five more units of the gold stone beads. So five units of gold stone to go in here and continue with that right angle weave. So gold stone bead is on, this doesn't change at all. I'm going in, I'm coming out of the top of there, I'm gonna go into the bottom after adding three beads. Give a nice tight pull. Try to decrease the amount of thread that you show. Go through the top bead and then make sure that I'm coming out through again the right hand side. That's box number one of my Goldstone right angle weave. I'm going to make four more boxes of the Goldstone, picking them up and using them in the design. So after you finish your fifth unit here, you're going to create your sixth unit. Rather than facing down, we want this nice V shape. To get this nice V shape here, so that the beads sit right to an angle, we are going to keep going with our thread to come out through our top bead. So I'm currently coming out the right hand side just like I normally would. I'm gonna go through the bottom. I'm just changing the thread orientation. Back through the left side of the box. So a little bit more thread passes here. And then out through the top of the box. Now I'm going into what I know. So I'm coming out the top of the box but now, just change it in your hand so this is running uh, parallel, or perpendicular rather. And now, three more beads go on. And just by simply starting at a different side of the right angle weave, I'm going into the top. Look, I changed the angle of where my right angle weave is happening and going. So again, I need to go through the bottom, I need to go through the right hand side of the bead. Once again, Three more beads go on, and I just continue now as normal. Go ahead and, and change up going through the top, and then coming out once again, the right hand side of the bead. There we go. So now it looks like I have three units that are going the opposite direction. Really it's just two because we utilize that fifth unit to go to both sides and be at the middle. So I have one, two, three. Going down through the top, through the bottom, over to the side, and then one more to go. Once I have that fourth section of raw here on this right side, then I'm gonna go back and go into my four millimeter bicones. So I'm downgrading this next time here from, and you can see I kind of turn it in my hand the way that I'm working on it just to work faster. Now I'm coming out the side of my piece here. I have that nice V section in, and I'm going to get ready to start back with my three millimeter bicones. So my three millimeter bicones, I put three on, and I switch from the six millimeter now to that four millimeter. Go through the bottom bicone, go through the right hand side of that raw box. So I'm going to do a mirror image, making sure that my sides match, completing a total of seven complete right angle units of just those bicones, and then I have that one eighth unit where we have the two combined and mixed. Once you have your center section here of your right angle weave, before we start embellishing, we're actually going to do the sides of the piece. So I have my button here, and I'm coming out of my last of my right angle weave units. I'm going to pick up my silver lined blush seed beads here in the 11O, and I'm just going to very simply add whatever length you want to make your necklace. So you may want it 16 inches, you may want it 18 inches, you may want it to be even longer at 24 inches. That's up to you. I'm gonna go ahead because I have my V section here is right about four inches. So I'm going to add another five inches of seed beads. So just literally picking up all of those seed beads till you have a total of five inches of seed beads. 
all the way up. If you want it to be longer, do another inch. One more inch will get you two inches longer on the necklace because we're gonna mirror the sides. Once you have five or so inches of seed beads, I went ahead and I picked up three of my secondary 11 color, which is the Duraco Galvanized Light Champagne. I put on three of those seed beads, went up through a cup button, added an 11, crystal 11, and came down through the cup button on the other side. I'm going to add two more of my 11 O's in that champagne color. And then the first 11 O, I'm going to sew into it so I'm going in through the opposite direction. And what that's going to do is give me an opportunity then, so I'm going back up basically through those top three, it gives me an opportunity to reinforce and to get a little V section there, see? From here, I'm going to go back through the crystal, back through the button, because anytime you have a clasp, you wanna make sure that that piece is going to be nice and secure. From here, I'm gonna take my thread and needle and start to go back through that first bead, from the first to the second, between there. Just get that nice V in there. And now I'm gonna do another five inches of seed beads. The five inches of seed beads are going to run parallel and then we're going the whole way back down to that four millimeter bead. So literally just a whole nother five inches of that silver lined blush to right, right next to it to get back down to the start of the necklace. Once you get back down to the base of the necklace, here's where we get to have fun. So we're gonna take our needle and thread after having those two strands there laying right next to one another, and we're gonna go through that same four millimeter bicone. Again, the strands will just run up and sit mirror image, and we're gonna get ready to decorate the bicones and then decorate the uh, goldstone, decorate the bicones, and then we'll repeat that seed bead pattern on the other side with a loop instead of the button since the button's already there. To go over the top of those bicones, we are going to add four of our beads at a time. So I'm going to keep with the light dark combo and we're going to do four, one, two, three, and four of our silver lined blush seed beads. I'm coming out of the bottom of the right hand side of this box, I'm going to go into the top of the left hand side of that same box. And see how that just brings those seed beads right over the top and really draws that design in. Once again, four beads go on in that blush color. Once I have the four blush beads go on, I'm coming out of the bottom of this open box right here. I'm going into the top of the left hand side, coming out the bottom right going into the top left and getting that nice design going over the top. As I continue down, you wanna make sure you don't pull too tight because what that can do is kind of create a turn or a twist in it. Just let it relax and put those four beads on the whole way down all the way till we're at the last opening or the last raw unit that is just the bicones. As we get into the raw unit that's connecting the bicones to the goldstone, we're gonna switch it up. As we get to the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to our galvanized color, to that light blah, or that light champagne. I'm going to do the exact same thing coming out the right hand side, going into the left hand side of this box, but this time I'm going to pick up six of my 11 O's in that light champagne color. Coming out the bottom of that right hand side of that box, I'm going to go into the top left hand side of that box. Now when we get to the middle here, we're gonna switch it even more. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, but our count just changes a little bit to make up for that room that's there. So we're gonna go from four to just that one count of our six count, and now I'm going to go to eight. So we're adding eight of our 11 OC beads in, coming out of the bottom right-hand side of that box. Once again, top left of that same little right angle weave unit box when that gets put in there. See how it adds that nice darker color in there? Same deal, eight more get added on. And we're coming out of the bottom, go into the top of the next left-hand side bead. Now you don't wanna to pull too tight because we don't want this to start turning as we're working on it. So I'm gonna continue on, two more boxes, adding it onto from the right bottom to the top left, 
and then once we get to the middle, I'll show you what we're going to do. So when we get to the bottom, we're just going to switch it up ever so slightly. So instead of going, because we're coming this way, if you tilt your head a little bit, we would normally go into this bottom bead here, coming out the bottom right, and we'd go into the top left. Instead, we're going to look at it straight on, and we're going to go right over to the bead that sits opposite. So I have my eight beads on, I'm coming out, we're switching it up in the direction we're looking, so we're coming out, the, out that top right squared bead, and we're going to go into the left, going in from the bottom toward the top. And that's just going to put those eight seed beads right there along the bottom in that V. If you want to, you can put beads along the top here then and circle back around so that way you have it in an X fashion. I'm going to keep it in this nice lined section. From here now, we're going to repeat that same V section on the top, or all the way to the top. So we're going to do the exact same thing, and we are going to add our eight beads. And then once we have our eight beads on, you're going to take your thread and needle, coming out that, spin it a little bit, coming out that top right, we're going to go into the bottom left. And see how they're going to mirror one another? Again, eight beads go on. Once those eight beads are on, I'm coming out the top right, bottom left. You should be able to lay your piece down here, look at it, and have it be a mirror image from one side to the other as you see those V's of seed beads interact and go up the line. I'm going to continue on. I still have two more of those to do here. Third one where I do, again, just six beads and then switching over to the silver lined crystal as we go up the back and get ready to put our long seed bead chain in. After my five inches of seed beads to match the opposite side here, let's see, I'm going to go in and switch to that light champagne color and I'm grabbing 28 of those beads. I'm then going to, just like the other one, go back through to reinforce all of those 28 beads. So just like we went back through those original three beads when we did the uh, button side, I'm sewing back through all of those beads. Now you'll have some extra beads if you want to go ahead and make a peyote style clasp or anything like that to make it a little fancier. And as we come out through the end of the loop, I want to come out through the end. And then what I'm going to do is sew through, back through that first bead, through the opposite direction. So just like we did with the other side. So go into the opposite way. That's just going to help it hang a little bit more centered, see? From here now, repeat. We get to do another five inches back down to our diagonal stitch, full of seed beads, and then tie off our thread ends to complete our necklace. Once your sides match up, you're just going to take your thread and needle, go into the opposite side of that four millimeter bicone, and then my thread is getting a little short. I'm going to spin around going through that last section of my right angle weave until I get my thread ends to match so I can just take off my stop bead and tie those two thread ends together. Again, removing the needle since it's getting really short. If it was longer, I'd keep it on so that way I can tie the knot and separate the thread a little bit, but you're not going to see it anyway next to these beads. So I'm going to tie those two thread ends together. Take my thread zap or thread burner then burn those thread edges down, and finish up the necklace. I'm super excited to see everybody's different color variations. If they want to do a different CB pattern, you could do an X in front and come back down. If you have some subscription extras, you may have a little crystal or a drop or something to hang down from that center as well. And really go through and use some of these basic techniques that we've been introducing to you to make a nice product that is your own while learning these fun skills like how to change directions while working with right angle weave. 
Thanks so much for joining me in this project, and I hope you've liked learning all the different basics that we've provided in your subscription box. We love making Potomac beaters happy and hope that you're increasing your skills. As always, if you want to check out the box or you want to check out any of the materials used in this video, look below in the, depart in the video description and you can click on links there. Remember also, if you haven't yet, subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's free and that way you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. Thanks guys so much for watching. Enjoy your box and hopefully you enjoy the next video to make you a better beater as well as more proficient and better at your craft.